Ooh. Crunchy, briny, garlicky. Sheep, sheep. This is sheep liver, Max. Are you eating raw? Yeah, yes. I didn't think I was going to get some raw sheep liver right now. Yeah. It's clean. You can't taste that. He wants me to keep going. We'll keep going. Hello, <laughs> Salafik. All for me, all four pieces. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Oh my god, we gotta get all four here. Okay. I think I'm good. <laughs> this is also we ate it uh, raw in, in our Lebanese meze. We call it the cheap la uh, cheap liver. <laughs> So much raw liver. Five hundred Lebanese lira for a manoushe. This is like one 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 cent. <laughs> Look at the spot in here. I mean, my gosh, you can see the webs. You can feel that it's over a hundred years old, and they're just cranking out the traditional Lebanese bread. <laughs> How this works no proofing rolling in the balls out to this man he's going to flatten them after they proof just a little bit longer flatten them completely and then he's going to hit them in the sesame seed onto the wooden little not two by four but a little plate of wood and then into the oven and out for sale but it's actually kind of suffocating when you come in here because the flour is just wafting everywhere you can't really breathe that well they wouldn't let us leave without one i feel terrible we had to throw a tip in there they didn't want us to pay so many people need this I'm the last person that needs this bread. There's a lot more people in there that need it than me, but... That was third degree burn. And pretty darn good. Especially for the price. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Honestly, I can't walk these streets and I keep getting handed food to me. Welcome to people. Anyways, we didn't get to finish, so the good news is we took one bread, but we made sure to pay for many people's breads. You know, if people are gonna give you good things, take that good energy, those vibes, push them forward. It's the only way to live life. Just a little station to clean up a little bit, a little something to drink. Yeah. They throw them, throw them to hang here. So we've come to the oldest hammam, which is kind of like a bathhouse in Lebanon. You go down a little back alley, and this is where you come. It's just. You have your towel wet. This guy moves in your towel. You all love trick shots. He just got that first try. Perfectly. Oh, yeah, take those off. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> Oh, that's perfectly done. <laughs> I can't do that even after a shower. Hey, shukran. So this is like after you get the bath, this is what you'd be like. You'd sit here, you'd smoke shisha, you'd drink some tea, 
על האל דול בסרוכי. I love this, he's three for three. He hasn't missed yet. This is the middle room where you relax a bit after coming from the hot room so you don't feel sick. You're... Very relaxing because when you look up, it almost looks like you're looking into the nighttime stars because it's dark, but it's got the little rays of lights and the little glass colored coverings. <laughs> I think I just realized, I think that bathhouse had to be like four or five hundred years old, right? Maybe more? I don't know how old it was. I'll Google it and find out and put it here, but that's one thing you don't want to think about. You don't want to think about how many naked butts have been in there already. So say when you come to Tripoli, one thing you have to have is the kake. Now we've eaten kake already, we saw it kind of looks like handbag. This is just a typical circular shape. They put a little cheese in there, you can get olives, green pepper and tomato as well. And it's famous here for putting it over some charcoal. And that's gas, so. <laughs> See, he's like in this little divot in between both little pathways. There's people walking both ways, and nobody can really. Hey, thank you. Nobody can really pass him without grabbing one of these. The one we ate on the way to Saidan. Almost if you're like from Turkey, you took the cement and you took the crust from it. It just had that nice air pocket. It's just like the crunchy outside crust. This one's a little more doughy. It's got a little bit of inside to it. It's not quite as thin. I like that he does heat it up a little bit. Everything on the inside gets warm. That cheese crumbles like a feta. It's got a saltiness to it. Can't go wrong with these ingredients. And clearly the place to be. I mean, you got people lining up both ways. You got just him and his son working, trying to crank out these sandwiches as fast as they can. Had to come check out the man with the orange plan, get a little orange juice after all that kake. Just got the tanginess, the sweetness balance on point already. Does not need any added sugar. Got all the pulp and all that texture with it. All right, we're gonna get out of here and hit a seafood restaurant. But right before we go, we're gonna get something sweet. Right on the edge, kind of going up towards the castle we are at, there's this little really hidden sweet shop. It's called uh, Schmeisse. Yeah. It's made from uh, rice and sugar. I think it's like mo mo mokki in Japan. Um, there's no way that's just rice and sugar because I have floralness to it. Again, kind of like a rose water or orange blossom or something like that. A little bit of powdered sugar coating. It's not as dense and as chewy as a mochi. It's almost like a, a locum and a mochi had a baby. They're right in between each other. It does have the softness, this chewiness, and but it does melt a little bit more than a mochi as well. The higher sugar content is what I think it is. 
Then there's a little pumpkin snack right here. It looks like making a little pumpkin, little candy, walnuts infused in here as well. Ooh, I was not expecting that at all. That pumpkin one has nice little warming spice notes in there, like a cinnamon and a clove, but really it's the texture it got me. It melts in your mouth like fudge. Grab to go. So this has actually been in his family for 150 years, y'all. This pumpkin one's special. Hmm. I'm taking that back with me to America. I thought I'd go back to America, but you know what I'm saying. So we're actually not in Tripoli anymore. We've come over closer to the water and this area is called Mina. From what I understand, this actually area was civilized before Tripoli itself. And you walk through these little alleys and it's, it's charming. It's got shutters to it. I don't know if it's a little more what architecture it is, but it's really charming. It's quieter over here, bigger, bigger uh, walkways or street, streetways, I should say, full of cobblestone. Hopefully a seafood restaurant soon. <laughs> what a hidden gem. Only 12 chairs. A group of men having all their meze and their rocky right now. I mean, this is a spot. This is where you want to eat. Oh, Nico. Oh, boo. I understand, sometimes you just need the beer. And see, I'm thinking about this place being a hidden gym. They're actually doing it in their house, so we're heading into the kitchen to watch some of the prep work. That's the shubhar adi. Kizbara. Coriander. Coriander. Hal. Chili. That walked up real fast. That smells pretty darn good when that starts to bubble. And then she's gonna dump that calamari in there after this toast just a little bit and releases the fragrances a little bit more. <coughs> wow, the spices be kicking. Do you take your lashes? And then just to finish it off, some cilantro and lemon juice. I'm just going to let that boil probably reduce down a little bit and thicken up and become sauce-like. We got a great spread right here. We got the raw fish. It looks like a type of tuna. We've got the meatballs that actually stuffed with a fish mixture. We got the calamari, which we got to see being made. And then we got like a spicy fish dish that's very, very popular to Tripoli. So we're going for the raw fish. Mm. It's a type of tuna, right? Yeah, we have some tuna in our coast. Take one piece. Take this. <laughs> Dip it in soy. <laughs> Soft, delicate tuna, a mild flavor. That's why they've got it in the olive oil to help enhance that flavor. And then the chunk of raw garlic is so clutch for me. It might be how I have to eat raw fish from now on with a big old chunk of raw garlic. Kimbe, but replacing meat with fish and burghul and fry it. Mm. And fill it with calamari and onions and tomatoes. Wow. Okay, so we got that calamari we watched cooked earlier. I always thought calamari was supposed to have a little chew to it and that just proves everything wrong. That is just pillow softness calamari and the way that lemon juice, that olive oil, all that cilantro have come together and it's just an aromatic bomb in your mouth. Mm. That is the softest calamari I've ever eaten.
All right, and this is a special dish, the Tripoli Samkahara. Right here is like a spicy fish dish. You see we got fish, you can see like tahina, pine nuts, which are very, very valuable here, infused with all different types of spices. Get a little bread here. A big old chunk of what I think is tuna. That one is a slow developing flavor and textural dish where that calamari comes out the gates, slaps you in the face. This one you continue to chew and chew. You work through this soft, white, flaky fish. Then you get the rich nuttiness from the tahina. You'll get the spices to start to tingle your taste buds and then it finishes with those pine nuts. Um, yeah, yeah, that takes the top spot. Favorite Lebanon so far for food. Tripoli's really done a number on me. Just go there, just go there. And gotta finish off this video with a little more drink. We were literally just like one, two, three, like four stalls down. It's kind of like this little hidden bar. It used to be a laundromat and it burned down and they kind of reinnovated it into a bar. It's got nice vibes to it. Ooh, fruity. That cinnamon really comes through. That's good. I don't even like whiskey, but I would drink that. <laughs> you, you said old fashioned. I was like, oh man, I don't know, but I could actually drink this. Sky, I like his whiskey sour. It's unique. I, I really don't like uh, dark alcohol, like whiskey or anything like that. So. It was very really special, I think now. Head back to the car and make our way back to Beirut because we got a long one tomorrow. I hope y'all enjoyed. From Tripoli and Mina. Man, I'm still dreaming about that seafood. I hope y'all really did enjoy it. I don't know where you're gonna find a food blog. We eat raw liver, the best sweets in all of the country. You go into like crazy bars that turn from laundry mats to that. You're just not gonna find a channel that covers all that and does it better than here. Hope y'all enjoyed it. So Max, I'll catch y'all at the next one. Peace.